Hello, brothers and sisters, this is Lisa, and I'm here to share some words by Oswald Chambers. The first one is titled, Friendship with God. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Genesis 18, verse 17. The delights of his friendship. Genesis 18 brings out the delight of true friendship with God, as compared with simply feeling his presence occasionally occasionally in prayer. This friendship means being so intimately in touch with God that you never even need to ask him to show you his will. It is evidence of a level of intimacy which confirms that you are nearing the final stage of your discipline in the life of faith. When you have a right standing relationship with God, you have a life of freedom, liberty, and delight. You are God's will, and all of your common sense decisions are actually his will for you, unless you sense a feeling of restraint brought on by a check in your spirit. You are free to make decisions in the light of a perfect and delightful friendship with God, knowing that if your decisions are wrong, he will lovingly produce that sense of restraint. Once he does, you must stop immediately. The difficulties of his friendship. Why did Abraham stop praying when he did? He stopped because he still was lacking the level of intimacy in his relationship with God, which would enable him boldly to continue on with the Lord in prayer until his desire was granted. Whenever we stop short of our de- of our true desire in prayer and say, well, I don't know, maybe this is not God's will, then we still have another level to go. It shows that we are not as intimately acquainted with God as Jesus was, and as Jesus would have us to be, that they may be one, just as we are one. John 17 verse 22. Think of the last thing you prayed about. Were you devoted to your desire or to God? Was your determination to get some gift of the Spirit for yourself or to get to God? For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Matthew 6 verse 8 The reason for asking is so you may get to know God better. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, verse 4. We should keep praying to get a perfect understanding of God himself. And that's the end of the first one. And the second one is titled, Identified or Simply Interested. I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2, verse 20. The inescapable spiritual need each of us has is the need to sign the death certificate of our sin nature. I must take my emotional opinions and intellectual beliefs and be willing to turn them into a moral verdict against the nature of sin, that is, against any claim I have to my right to my right to myself. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He did not say I have made a determination to imitate Jesus Christ, or I will really make an effort to follow him, but I have been identified with him in his death. Once I reach this moral decision and act on it, all that Christ accomplished for me on the cross is accomplished in me. My unrestrained commitment of myself to God gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to grant to me the holiness of Jesus Christ. It is no longer I who live. My individuality remains, but my primary motivation for living and the nature that rules me are radically changed. I have the same human body, but the old satanic right to myself has been destroyed. And the life which I now live in the flesh, not the life which I long to live or even pray that I live, but the life I now live in my mortal flesh, the life which others can see. 
I live by faith in the Son of God. This faith was not Paul's own faith in Jesus Christ, but the faith the Son of God had given to him. Ephesians 2 verse 8. It is no longer a faith in faith, but a faith that transcends all imaginable limits, a faith that comes only from the Son of God. And that's the end of the second one. And the last one is titled, The Burning Heart. Did not our heart burn within us? Luke 24, verse 32. We need to learn the secret of the burning heart. Suddenly Jesus appears to us. Fires are set ablaze and we are given wonderful visions. But then we must learn to maintain the secret of the burning heart. A heart that can go through anything. It is the simple dreary day with its commonplace duties and people that smothers the burning heart unless we have learned the secret of abiding in Jesus. Much of the distress we experience as Christians comes not as the result of sin, but because we are ignorant of the laws of our own nature. For instance, the only test we should use to determine whether or not to allow a particular emotion to run its course in our lives is to examine what the final outcome of that emotion will be. Think it through to its logical conclusion, and if the outcome is something that God would condemn, put a stop to it immediately. But if it is an emotion that has been kindled by the Spirit of God, and you don't allow it to have its way in your life, it will cause a reaction on a lower level that God intended that is the way unrealistic and overly emotional people are made. And the higher the emotion, the deeper the level of corruption. If it is not exercised on its intended level, if the Spirit of God has stirred you, make as many of your decisions as possible irrevocable, and let the consequences be what they will. We cannot stay forever on the Mount of Transfiguration, basking in the light of our mountaintop experience, Mark 9, verses 1 through 9. But we must obey the light we received there. We must put it into action. When God gives us a vision, we must transact business with Him at that point, no matter what the cost. We cannot kindle, when we will, the fire which is which in the heart resides. The spirit bloweth and is still. In mystery our soul abides. But tasks in hours of insight willed can be through hours of gloom fulfilled. And that is the end of these words. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.